thought I would squeeze in one more film day here in Texas before we took off 16 hours all the way out to the Juan Bass US Open in Nevada. Today, we squeezed in a little tip video on the home pond and we absolutely smoked a stump. Completely messed up my skeg, literally half of it's missing. On the way back in, I felt the drag of that skeg. It's amazing, these mercury outboards, the way they push so much water, and if there's just a little bit something wrong with that skeg, it slows you down like six miles per hour. So we are no longer hydrodynamic in the skeg front. I called Bass Pro Shops, they have a skeg guard waiting for me, but we're leaving at 4 a.m. tomorrow, so I can't pick it up here in Dallas-Fort Worth area. I gotta pick it up all the way in Las Vegas, Nevada. Practice for the Juan Bass US Open started today and we're 17 hours away so really excited for this tournament you guys can buckle up hang out with us long drive there a long practice period i mean we're gonna have six days of practicing so you guys get to hang out with us chill out enjoy the view dallas fort worth to las vegas nevada here we go but first a little more repair <laughs> All right, 17 hours down. We're on Pacific time now, and we left the Texas house at 2 a.m. Pacific time, and here we are, 7 p.m. Look at that view, though. That is amazing. Look at this. We're in the desert, man. Looks like we got neighborhood dogs. Hopefully our dogs get along with them. All right, we made it. Juan Bass US Open, such an iconic Western tournament. We drove 17 hours yesterday from Fort Worth, Texas to Laughlin, Nevada. This particular tournament on Lake Mojave, which is just over this dam, is particularly special to me because I was just doing the math on it. 30 years ago, my dad took me fishing for the first time right here, right underneath this dam. And little things like, oh, when the dam opens up and the current flows through, the fish start biting. I used to catch trout and stripers and catfish all through here. I didn't know it at the time, but when those gates open up and the current starts moving, I was learning about fishing. I didn't know that at the time, but all these years later, Whenever I fish a dam and I see water moving, I think back to all those, you know, decades ago, literally 30 years ago, um, I think of those times, my dad bringing me here underneath the Davis Dam on the Colorado River chain. We're about an hour south of Las Vegas. Crystal clear, beautiful water. That's Lake Mojave. Lake Mead is just above it. It's a really, really special week to be here competing at the Juan Bass US Open here because, you know, my dad built a house here in the 90s. My grandfather's 95 years old and he lives just down the river right here. So I have a lot of history here. Not so much bass fishing on Lake Mojave, but all this trout fishing and striper fishing all along this Colorado River chain. Really, really special week. And uh, before we get into the fishing and the practicing out there on Lake Mojave, I just wanted to come down here and reminisce a little bit. It's a pretty special place for me. That's crazy, making these casts. I used to make that exact same cast right there 30 years ago, I was nine years old. My dad didn't know what he was doing. He just wanted to come down here and bring his boys down to learn about fishing. And I'm so glad he did, but nothing has changed here. Pretty amazing. That water comes out of like 80, 90, 100 feet of, you know, 100 feet of water. That dam sucks from the bottom of Lake Mojave and pushes it straight through, goes on to Lake Havasu. Pretty amazing. Heck, if my dad didn't take me down here 30 years ago, we, we wouldn't be here today. Ain't that right, Charlie? Mm -hmm. All right, let's move along. Let's, uh, let's go check out the house that's 
no one lives in. He doesn't rent it out. It's just a house that lives in 120 degree weather year round. Let's go check that out. And then we gotta go see Gramps. And then we can finally get into fishing. Come on, Beans. Beak, you here? Pete Zaldane. We're in, the, we're in the desert hood, I think. Grandpa's been here for 40, 40, 50 years? 40 years? Stay. Okay. Hey, Grandpa. Hey, good How to see are you? Again. Good, good, good. <laughs> yeah. Glad finally That's, got to see you. Yes, absolutely. You're looking good. That's Charles. Charles, Hi, Charles my hey. Nice to meet you. Hi, hey, Pete. Like a hit. Come on, Come on. Go back here and find a cat. Go back here and find a cat. <laughs> well, we start fishing tomorrow. Start fishing tomorrow. Yeah, we had 17 hour drive yesterday and then uh, we get to, I had all that stuff to do on my boat today. We start practicing tomorrow. So it's supposed to blow like 40 mile per hour on yeah. Thursday. So Thursday I'll come back and we can hang out more on Thursday. Repeat. 17 <laughs> years old, Navy. And then there's the ship he was on right there. Yeah, my brother was on this. Yeah. USS Princess. Prince. My brother over there. Yeah. Turn that, turn, pull that stream right there. This one here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's your brother? Yeah, my brother, he was killed. He was lucky to board ship. USS Prince. I didn't know that. Yeah. And then there's my older, my brother next to me, Val. There's, uh, there's my dad, Charles. Look at that. Before, before Nam. What's going on over here? Look at this. Uh, is it 56, Grandpa? 56 uh, yeah. F, F100? Yeah. The Ford F100. Look at that thing. It was restored by uh, by my aunt. And her boyfriend. And her boyfriend down in Southern yeah. California. And they did a phenomenal job on it. Beautiful. Did you buy this truck originally new or no? No, I bought that. It was, it wouldn't hardly run. I yeah, it wouldn't it run. Sick. It was sick. It had about, oh, I don't know, 50, 60. About 60, 70,000 miles on there. Yeah. Uh, the speedometer hadn't gotten very far since then. I remember it was maroon. It was maroon color. Yeah, there was pictures. And it's got a 390 in it, right? Yeah. So old Pete's got the, a club on the steering wheel here of the F-156 uh, truck. Charles didn't even know what a club was before his time. <laughs> Charles is 22, 23. Those clubs were real popular in the 90s <laughs> to prevent people from stealing Because I'm busy cars. younger myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right, Grandpa. Out here crushing it at 95, 94. Oh, gonna be 95. I'll be 96 in November. Oh, 96. Yes. I'll be 96 That's right, in you're 95. Yeah, you're born in 27, correct? Yes. Do the math. 1927. <laughs> Amazing. That's amazing. Oh yeah. How hey, pull it up, Mike. Yep, Chris. Yep. Three ninety V eight. Look at all the room. See the see the firewall. That's, that's the original color. Wow. That's day one paint job on yeah. this thing. So they match the paint. <laughs> Look at Michi. <laughs> Look at the dogs, they're freaking out. Look at that. <laughs> Pull a key up. That's awesome. I like that. <laughs> That's cool. You know what? I go, I'll go. i be driving down the street. People wave at me and everything. Yeah. And they say, go like, put the thumbs up. Then I hit that little button. Ooh. And then they, oh my God, they get all the time. <laughs> Pretty awesome. <laughs> Hey, what's that bronze hat right there? That's your own dad. Is that his boonie hat from Vietnam? Yeah. Is it really? That's his issue. That's Army issues? Army issues? Right. Yeah, I'm definitely taking that. It's a dude. good hat. <laughs> that was called a boonie hat? Or no? It's like a fishing hat. Floppy patrol hat. <laughs> you know what? Your aunt, Cheryl. Joel bronze it? Yeah. November. It's an Army issued hat. So what was that? That was 1968, 69? Wow. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna keep that one. Them guys went what they did. They drilled a hole in it and put yeah. a propeller up there. Oh, they put a propeller? <laughs> <laughs> did they really? Yeah. Oh, they, put a oh, they put a propeller. I was telling you about that. <laughs> Fishing below the dam, this is where I used to clean the trout. Yeah. Grandpa taught me how to clean rainbow trout. 
and clean stripers and you know cut the fins off of them gut them and all that at 9 10 11 years old this is it. i mean i was little i was like up here <laughs> oh, this, all, this i took all that other crap yeah out of here. that's right we spent a lot of time over here. It's, it was about an eight hour drive from where I grew up, San Jose, California, all the way to Laughlin. But uh, it's more than eight. Yeah. yeah. Eight nowadays, with, the, yeah, with all the traffic they have out there in California. Yeah. Hey, Grandpa, have a good night. Old Pete, man. Pete's the man. 95. 95 years old, gonna be 96. Okay, go ahead and order some food. We're leaving uh, Grandpa's. Back 30 years ago when we'd leave his house, we'd wave. Crazy, man, I'm getting old. He's getting old. He's really old. 96 and still kicking, man. He's sharp, man. He is sharp, huh, for 96. Yeah. He is sharp for 96, proud of him. down here coming down to this ramp and my brakes were super super hot and as I just backed in the water here like a bunch of steam just went off my trailer. That's fucking hot. It's time to get serious about bass fishing. Yesterday was cool. We uh, I did a little sampling of Lake Mojave. I went out alone, caught some really nice ones, doing the forward facing sonar thing. You know, last year our buddy Josh Bertrand won this event. Uh, you know, doing that whole thing, catching big smallmouth. I think I finished fifth place last year, fishing deep smallmouth with the drop shot, kind of slow fishing. But I sampled some of that, caught some fish yesterday. While I was fishing, Charles went up to the very top of that mountain, just over yonder and he had some really, really cool shots. So this morning, we're gonna get serious about fishing, but this is the part of the video where we really show off the beauty of the desert, the Mojave Desert, this canyon of the Colorado River. To my right, I've got uh, Hoover Dam, which holds back Lake Mead, and up through there goes you know, the Grand Canyon, and then to my left is Lake Mojave, where it opens up into beautiful smallmouth country. That's where we're heading, so check out this nice little drive through the canyon here with a little bit of Charles's shots from that mountain just over the hillside there. So definitely a very pretty place to catch some smallmouth. Check this out.
you have any reception here or no? Well, they still live here. Not a huge one, but population of smallmouth are still in this area, so that's good. There's no boats here this morning, so that's good. The technique is just pretty much everything you've been watching on Bass Live over the last like two months for smallmouth. Just looking around these flats, these long points, flats, little rock piles, and I mean, that's just a little one. It's definitely a keeper. A limit of those will probably get you 30th place out of, you know, 160, 175 boats. But yeah, that's a nice Mojave smallmouth. That feels good to bang on some of these. What we're dealing with here is just a, you know, there's a, a winter drawdown here on Lake Mojave. So just two weeks ago, they started dropping the water level and it's dropping like three to four inches per day. So everything that's living up there shallow is pretty much freaking out and just like moving out offshore. That's why, you know, the forward facing sonar with the drop shot technique is so effective because you know you're fishing for those fish that are like spooked and they're pulling off the bank and they're just kind of setting up on little points and rock piles so that's the name of the game here staying in clearer water and uh, just trying to find balls of bait just drop shotting around and you know looking for 20 21 22 pounds a day last year i think it was 22 pounds a day want it this year i'd imagine be just a little bit tougher simply because people know now what the target weight is so should be a little bit less weight to win this year but it's still going to take a hefty bag of smallies now these are probably those are bass right there but these are probably baby stripers is what those are see how fast they're moving if they're not a big ball of shad they're baby stripes yesterday i caught one i caught a small mouth look at that one right there caught a small mouth yesterday that had a baby striper in its in its throat that was like four and a half inches like swim bait size look at him following it Someone's honking at me. Oh my God, look at them, look at them, look, look, look. That's what they're eating, little baby stripers. Look at all these things, they're chasing my weight. Oh, I got something better for them, watch this. Watch this. Here they come, look at them. Got, oh, I got one. That's what they're eating right there. Little baby striper. That's what was in that fish's gullet yesterday. They're eating. God, I'm gonna catch a smallmouth on a spoon. That's too much fun at Champlain. Uh oh, here we go. Smallmouth. Oh, he ran from it. He didn't want it. I think the water might be too clear for the spoon, Charlie. Oh, that's a good one. Oh my gosh, big one. Big one. Look how pretty that fish is. Oh my gosh. That's one of the prettiest smallmouth. You will find out west. Oh, yes. Look at that thing. There's not a soul around. And look at that one. That one's pushing five. Heavy, heavy four pounder. Just a single. I saw down there in 35 feet of water, man. That is so awesome. Beautiful Lake Mojave smallmouth. A limit of those will win you this tournament. Just gorgeous, not a soul around, nothing but mountains, clear water, and just the sound of wind. That's all you hear, just a dead sound of wind. Gorgeous smallmouth, dude, it's a fatty. Absolute tank. Whew, that was cool. Yeah, like I was saying, the technique, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing we, we watched, you know, up there at the St. Lawrence, up there at Champlain. As boring as forward-facing sonar is, it is absolutely effective on deep smallmouth i mean there's simply no other way you know to target these deep ones that are just like i said the water level is dropping fast so any of these big ones like this that are along the bank the shoreline grass 
um, are spooked, all, literally off the bank, and they're just pushing out deeper. And the best way to intercept them is uh, just forward-facing sonar and just pitching a little drop shot to them. Really, really simple, but that's a giant right there, man. Awesome. All right, this stretch has still got them. We're just going to poke around a little bit more, and uh, I don't want to beat them up too much, you know? This is going to be a 160, 175-boat tournament, so I don't want to beat on these spots and these areas too much. It's got a good little feeling uh, for what's going on, and um, yeah, then we could hang out with Grandpa more. <laughs> nice and strong. Yes. And that just right there solidifies what I'm going to do. I mean, we're four days out and when the tournament starts, but I mean, that's awesome. It's a series of long points that literally, it's just a desert. I was saying that on the way over here, like, so we went through the canyon. So wherever you have canyons, obviously it's gonna be deep drops um, all through there. But like when you have these natural washes like this, like literally these sand washes start miles and miles and miles up that mountain. As that rain comes down, it just washes all that sand down into these wash slides and they slide. It doesn't get a lot of rain here, but the rain that they do get, just goes right through this natural, natural wash and that in turn bring, washes in all the, the nutrient sediment um, and aquatic plant life all along here and that's what they relate to. So whenever I'm driving down the lake and I see you know a bunch of sheer drop-offs, I'm trying to stay away from that. Every time I see these natural washes that start way, way, way up in the mountains where Charles was hiking yesterday, that's where I'm gonna spend most of my time and just kind of scan around and pitch and make my presentations that way. But that's a big one, almost five pounder and there's not a soul around. That one was on that old boat, look. That was an old boat right there. Boat that's turned upside down, you can even see the outboard. He's just a little guy, but potential. Little, 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 little. little. All right, this is extremely boring, even just Practicing this is boring, so I'm gonna save this for the tournament doing this forward-facing sonar drop shot game Since I've got a south wind right now I'm gonna pick up a reaction bait either a chatter bait or a crankbait or a spinner bait old-school fishing and find a wind-blown grass line And just go down it and see if there's anything milling around up there in that shallow grass That's fun fishing The question is, was it, was it an insurance claim or they just got tired of it and just decided to dump it here? Either way, it's kind of bullshit. There's coyote, there's coyote tracks going into it. What is going on here? I got the key. Look at that. Just in case he wanted to take it for a spin. People just dumped their crap. Uh oh, there goes my boat. <laughs> this is why you wear a flip flop. Yeah. Oh, dude, that is like super buddy. Feels good on my coat. Yeah, they got all kinds of cool beaches all along, like from Lake Mead to Mojave. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw like the record low water levels on Lake Mead, but they were uncovering like barrels of dead bone, like bones of dead people. And they were saying that's like the old time Las Vegas mob. They'd go out to Lake Mead and dump them. Low water exposed all that. Like look that up. If you haven't seen it or heard about it, look that up. It's pretty cool. But Lake Mojave's got all kinds of sweet beaches. Unfortunately, jerk people, asshole people, like litter all through here. I'm like, that's not cool at all, dude. Look at all this garbage, dude. Look at broken glass, Tito's bottles. It is cool though, because I mean, this is all natural sand. I mean, it's not like you, they loaded this all in here, you know, unloaded it. This is all natural. I'd be careful walking around oh, barefoot. Dude. I know there's scorpions out here. There's like numerous species of rattlesnakes out here. Plenty of coyotes. And white girls, apparently. White coral right there. <laughs> nice, Charles. You're right. White claws. What is this? What's this track right here? That's a big lizard. It's lizard. Oh my god. Oh no. No, no, no. 
<laughs> oh, good eye, Charles. It's over there taking pictures of lizard tracks. <laughs> That's a sign. We better leave before it takes off a third time. Ooh, that mud stinks, dude. By far the best glide bait for under 20 bucks. By far. So I fish all around the country, like, and I always fish unfamiliar lakes. Like one thing to keep in mind, like when we're fishing unfamiliar places is like always look for birds like for whatever reason whether they're diving birds looking for shad or bait fish or coots like in front of me here you know the black birds with the little white bills those birds right there expose vegetation and vegetation of course on these big vast lakes like this where there's not much vegetation in the lake they expose where life is so just because they're not grebes or diving you know fish eating birds doesn't mean, you know, don't pay attention to them. Like pay attention to every type of bird out here on these lakes and that helps you, you know, find life. And that's essentially all we're doing when this lake is 70 miles long, you could break it down that much faster because we can't see everything. We can't fly a drone and see, you know, all the little patches of grass and things. So you got to use every little thing to your advantage. And that's the cool thing about like nature. Like she provides everything. Like you just have to pay attention. sitting here trying to enjoy lunch and this map has a little airplane icon so there's either a crashed airplane right there or this is a landing strip either way I'm gonna find out let's go take a look all right look at it. it's just like a straightaway can you click on it it looks like hogs were here That is a pretty view behind me. This sure beats practicing. I already know what I'm gonna do in the tournament. So earlier in this video, I told you Charles, he overlaid some footage from his hike yesterday. He was on that mountain right there. 5,000 feet elevation. What a lake. <clears throat> this almost looks like this was like the old water line, almost like where we're at right now. Cause everything is like flat right here, this level. All right, so we're not the first ones who've been here. Obviously, there's a beer can, right? A beer bottle right here. Look what's inside the beer bottle. It's a dead lizard. Either someone caught the lizard, some kids caught the lizard, put it in the beer bottle, and it died, or the beer bottle was tossed up here, and the poor lizard found its way in there. Ship in a bottle, lizard in a bottle. All right, the Gaza airstrip does not exist up there. So now I know next time I'm flying my private jet, my PJ, I know not to land right here. Gosh. Eight pound Tatsu and he's running in the tire and there was a giant one with it. No wonder freaking large mouth on tires over 60 feet of water. <laughs> awesome. All right, that's not going to get us anywhere in the tournament, but I'm just going to go ahead and give him a hole in one right there. Rod. I had to pull this punch rod out. I was running down the river, coming back up. I'm like, man, look at all these little pockets with, with coots and grass. I pulled out my punch rod and like my third flip in there, there's a large mouth fight right there. I mean, that, that's a play. I mean, that is definitely a move. Oh, 
much, dude. I had a freaking hunch. Grab this rod. There's no one doing this. That is freaking awesome right there. That is a freaking pattern up here, bud. <sighs> That's a giant largemouth for here. Freaking punching largemouth in the freaking desert. All right, secondary pattern unlocked. That's a cheat code right there. Because again, those washes I was talking about that start way up in the mountains, those washes that come down, and if there's any type of grass mat in, this, in those washes, I'm gonna flip. Dude, that's awesome, that makes me feel good. That's the pattern unlocked right there. <laughs> flipping by to be had. Anywhere there's reeds and life up on the bank, there's gonna be weeds and life in the water. Last year, um, I caught two fives off this spot way offshore. There hasn't been a single boat on it the last couple days. I think that was my co-angler from last year on that spot. I just drove by and driving back to the ramp here, I'm like, man, this is gonna happen. Like people, you know, People learned last year that the forward-facing sonar thing way off the bank is, you know, is what won and what did well last year. So these guys out here out west, they they know, they learn quickly. So on my way back here, we're getting into the river. There's not, there's like no one up here, and uh, and I just found some grass, some weeds here with some um, with some coots. And I had to dig out my flipping stick, my Texas flipping stick here, and I just caught three nice largemouth all through here. One of them was a, was, was you know four pound class fish. But after seeing that dude on my spot, I was like, man, I need to find some secondary stuff, some backup stuff, and we found that. So that gives me something to expand on over the next couple of days of practice to expand on this flipping and punching bite. Gotta pay attention to that water level, make sure it doesn't get too low. Um, but with the way these guys learn by watching, whether it's my co-angler from last year or people watching online, watching Josh Bertrand win last year, four facing sonar, these guys will learn quick, and in this day and age, largemouth bass fishing, smallmouth bass fishing, tournament bass fishing, people learn quick, and you gotta keep on adapting and keep switching it up on them. And that's why we're up the river flipping a bandito bug. So with that, I'm gonna get out of here, guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging out the last couple days. You guys met my grandfather. He saw a sick truck. You saw where I grew up fishing, just three miles from here, down below the dam. You guys saw me catch a big, uh, small mouth. I caught a big large mouth for Lake Mojave. Thank you guys again for hanging out. Until next time, we're going to try to win this tournament.